Hi, my name is Rob Masiak, and this is a video about the Dumbek or the Darabutka for the hobbyist slash layman. So if you're stuck at home during the pandemic and you want to learn a really fun hand drum that doesn't cost that much to buy a synthetic version of, and that's fairly easy to get into and make some really cool and fun sounds on, this is a good video for you. The Dumbek, which is r relatively synonymous with the Darabutka, um, the Darabuka originated in primarily the West Orient, the Ottoman Empire slash Turkey, Egypt, and North Africa. It's a goblet-shaped drum, somewhat like a djembe. It would have been made out of metal of some sort, and it would have an animal skin head stretched over the top of it. It's existed for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years and was gradually brought from the Middle East to Western Europe but via the Crusades and then made its way to Western North America. And now we have the synthetic version of it that we have today. This particular one is made out of powder coated aluminum and has a very low maintenance plastic head on the top. You'll find that most of the time they come like this so that there's no bolt protruding out of the top, but it's just tunable with a standard five millimeter Allen key. And you can adjust the tension and the pitch of the head with the Allen key. And we're gonna do some fun stuff with this instrument today. This video is dedicated to Zia Tabassian, who is an early music specialist and a Middle Eastern music specialist. And because this instrument is called the doom back, of course, because you have the doom sound and the beck sound, which we'll get into in a little bit. And Zia also has a YouTube Academy series on the tom back, which is a Persian instrument. And of course the tom back has the tom sound and the back sound, as well as a few other sounds. So I'm going to make a little joke for you, Zia, and unless you are Zia or you've checked out the Tomback Academy series on YouTube, you won't get this joke, but here it is anyway. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So when you're playing this instrument, the sort of hobbyist and easiest way to start to learn doing it, you're going to want to put it between your legs and you can even cross your legs uh, down by your ankles so that you don't have to work so hard to squeeze the instrument between, um, between the portion of your legs above your knees, and then it'll be more comfortable to hold on to. But also it's very important that your arms are able to move freely. So you wanna have a chair that's at a relatively comfortable height and a chair preferably that does not have arms on it. This is a standard folding chair. And it's actually a rehearsal chair that orchestras use because it has padding on it. So it's nicer to sit on it, but you can just use a normal folding chair. It's best for it to not have arms on it. That way when I'm sitting on the chair, I can move freely and move across the area, surface area of the head of the instrument. And that's a little bit about your comfortable seating arrangement for being able to play the instrument. All right, so the first sound we're gonna talk about is the doom or the bass sound. And there are a few different ways of getting it, a few different sort of nuances and ways of getting it. The main thing you wanna worry about when you're trying to produce this sound is making sure that because your, your hand, part of your hand is gonna be coming in contact with this metal rim here. And you really wanna make sure that you don't jam a knuckle into the metal rim. Because if you do, it probably won't hurt right away, but in half an hour, it's gonna start hurting and then it's going to hurt for several days. And you're gonna wonder what's the matter with your hand. So what I like to do is I like to actually approach the drum like this so that it's this part of my hand behind my largest row of knuckles coming in contact with the rim and the thumb is off to the side and out of the way. And in terms of how you get that sound, you can, if you want a slightly lighter sound, you can just use your middle finger and your ring finger and bounce off of the instrument. Don't keep your hand on the instrument. If you do, you'll just dampen it. So just let it bounce off. Loosen your joints so that the rebound of the head naturally forces your fingers away. If you want a louder bass sound, use all four of your fingers. Don't try to connect them together because that'll just make you tense. Just spread them apart, be nice and relaxed and loosey-goosey. Same approach with the palm of the hand on the edge of the drum and off it comes. So you've got your quiet doom with just your two middle fingers and then you've got your loud doom with all four fingers. Try that a few times slowly, quiet, loud. Loud. 
All right, the next sound we're going to talk about is a variation on the beck sound or the high sound. There are kind of two different variations. So the first one we're going to do is an open high sound. And what we're just going to do is we're going to kind of do this with our hands as though we're going, yeah, rock on, but we're just doing this. And we're using the pads, only the pads of the middle finger and the ring finger of either hand on the edge of the drum. And what you're just going to do is play it and bounce off. So don't keep it on the drum. We're going to talk about that later. This time we're just bouncing off so that you get that really high, upper pitched, shrill sound of the drum. Make sure you try it a little bit with each hand. Right, left, right, left, two times with each hand. Right, right, left, left, four times with each hand. Right, right, right. And then the third sound we're going to talk about is, uh, like I said before, when we were doing the Beck sound, this is another variation on the Beck sound or the high sound, and it is the closed high sound or the dampened high sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use one hand. I'm just going to keep one hand on the instrument. For this, you can use your non-dominant hand. Keep it on the instrument. And then use the same approach we just did for the open high sound, except you're going to be using, once again, your middle finger and your ring finger, just the pads of them. And this time we're going to keep the hand on the drum. So that you get that high pitched upper sound. So place your hand on the drum and dampen. Keep the pads of the fingers on the drum. A few more times. And that's our third sound. So now that we've learned our three sounds, it's important that we practice just a very, in a basic way, going back and forth between those three sounds before we start adding in lots of crazy other notes and motions so that we can just sort of get it programmed into our muscle memory how we're gonna move back and forth between those tones. So we're gonna start with the first two and just alternate between going back and forth between them. Start with our dominant hand. We'll do the loud doom and the open beck. So it's gonna be We'll do the quiet doom and the open beck with the dominant hand once again. Feel free to run that back and try it again if you want. Now we're going to do the loud doom with the dominant hand and the open beck sound with the non-dominant hand. We'll do the quiet doom with the dominant hand and the open back with the non-dominant hand. All right, just a few more of these exercises before we start getting a little more adventurous. So now we're going to do the loud doom and then the dampened high sound. So it's gonna be the loud doom with the dominant hand, dampen with the non-dominant hand, and then play the high-pitched dampen sound with the middle and ring fingers of your dominant hand. Let's go back and forth and do that a few times. Now let's do the quiet bass tone with the dampened high pitch sound. Basically exactly what we just did, except the quiet bass tone instead. And here we go. And last, we're just switching back and forth. We're going to do bass, open high sound, bass, dampened high sound. For the bass one, do whichever one you want. You can do loud or you can do quiet. I'm gonna alternate back and forth between each and I'm just gonna do it a few times so that you can play along if you want to. So here we go. Bass, dampened. Bass, open. Bass, dampened. Bass, open. Bass, dampened. Bass, open. Bass, 
stamp it. Now try switching your hands. as many combinations of that as you want until you get more comfortable switching back and forth and it feels a little smoother and easier to do. Next thing we need to do is make sure that we're coming up with some sort of an exercise and a method to train us to play in steady rhythm and just move the hands smoothly as we go through some motions. So this is going to be called check pattern and that's kind of something imported from the marching band world but it makes perfect sense when we're learning this instrument on a pretty fundamental level. So we're going to start with the dominant hand. You can start with your right hand. You can start with your left hand, whatever you want to do. I'm going to use my right hand to start. And we're just going to lightly do the high open sound. And what we're going to do is we're going to count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And within each of those four beats, we're going to put four notes and it's gonna be alternating back and forth. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four in the first beat, two, two, three, four in the second beat, three, two, three, four in the third beat, four, two, three, four in the fourth beat without those little pauses in between. So here we go. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. And it's nice to try to pulse on the main beats a little bit, which I was doing a little bit of just uh, just now. Uh, so I'm gonna do a slightly more exaggerated example of that so that you can see what I mean. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Try to get comfortable with that. Once you're good at a slower speed like that, try to increase the speed gradually, but don't speed up gradually as you're playing. Pick a new speed and then try to stay steady at that speed. So if I want to jack it up a notch and go one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, I'm going to try to keep it steady at that pace. Three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Right, left, 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 right. Do a lot of that at whatever speed you want, and you don't have to use a metronome. You don't have to do it in silence. You can even put a standard rock or electronic song on your stereo system and do it along with that if you wanted to. This is the last part of the layman's guide slash hobbyist guide to the Doombeck slash Dotterbuka video level one super basic. Uh, but I'm just trying to teach you how to have some fun with the instrument. So what we're going to do in this one is we're going to take the back forth stuff that we were doing before and we're going to make add it to that check pattern stuff that we just did. And it's going to be a bit of a learning curve to get the hands to be able to do this. So if you're having trouble with this section of the video, simply zoom back to the last two sections we just did, the back, forth, back, forth, and the check pattern, check pattern, and do a whole bunch more of that, maybe at a slower speed, and then you'll be able to do this part, which is putting the two of them together. So the first thing we're gonna try to do is with our check pattern, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, we're gonna take the one and the three, and we're gonna make those bass tones. For now, we're gonna make them quiet bass tones so that we're always using these two fingers, the middle finger and the ring finger of the dominant hand, and all we're doing is just moving those two fingers back and forth, so you're only worried about the forearm motion and the bicep motion you have to do. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, Two, 
and try that a little faster. Three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one. If you're feeling pretty ambitious, we'll take it up to the next level, which is gonna be doing the loud bass tone, all four fingers, and otherwise the same thing we were doing. So it's gonna be loud on one, loud on three, and otherwise back here with a little bit of a pulse on two, a little bit of a pulse on four. So we'll try it slowly. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two. Try it a little faster. Three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, four, two, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, two, three, four, four, two, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And then here's the last example we're going to do, uh, just in terms of an example on its own. We're going to add in the dampen one. And this is definitely going to be the most complicated example we're going to isolate on its own, which is where we do a bass tone, one, two, three, four, two, except that the last stroke that we do with the dominant hand before we hit the louder pulsed note on two is going to have to be replaced with the dampen. So it's going to be bass, open, open, dampen, slap. And then to continue, you're gonna to have to get your non-dominant hand back to continue in the pattern of alternating back and forth. So it's gonna be bass, open, open, dampen, slap, and then you're gonna continue on with the pattern. So first, just try. Stop, try it again. Bass, open, open, dampen, slap, stop, try it again. Bass, open, open, damp, slap. And last time, bass, open, open, dampen, slap. And now we're going to continue after those five notes with the two, three, four of beat two. So it's gonna be bass, open, open, dampen, slap, two, three, four. Try it again. Bass, open, open, dampen, slap, two, three, four. Try it again. Bass, open, open, dampen, slap, two, and now, without the pause in between. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Right, left, 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 Place, open, open, tap and slap, open, 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 place, tap and slap. Feeling ambitious, you want to try that a little bit faster. And then the last thing that I'll say is that once you've programmed patterns like that into your muscle memory and you've gotten into the habit of doing them enough that you're comfortable speeding them up and you're not getting tense and uncomfortable when you speed them up. You can start to just rely on your muscle memory. You don't have to think as much with your brain about every individual stroke that you're doing. All that you'll have to think about with your brain is, I wanna switch back and forth between those different exercises this way. So when it gets a little faster, on going back and forth between those three different sounds and primarily relying on the alternating check pattern, which is an extension of the most basic fundamentals of playing this instrument for fun as a hobbyist, which we just went over. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.